CBS has long been one of the major American television networks and is home to several beloved sitcoms, dramas, and action shows viewers have excitedly tuned into every week. However, not nearly as well-known are CBS's three attempted forays into starting a production company for theatrical movies. The thinking was that, with their success on television, surely CBS could also attract movie audiences. Thus, Cinema Center Films was founded in 1967. The studio's first movie was the comedy with Six You Get Egg Roll, starring Doris Day. It was a decent box office success, but it would most notably become Day's last film role. Although it was not her final association with CBS, as The Doris Day Show would begin airing on the network that same year. With Cinema Center Films established, they also sought signed deals with various actors and producers, which included Jack Lemmon and Steve McQueen. A significant early success for them was the first Peanuts movie, A Boy Named Charlie Brown. The film made an impressive $12 million on its small budget and was nominated for an Oscar for its music, achievement usually reserved for Disney's animated movies before then, and it also showed how much Charles Schultz's characters had grown in popularity in the almost 20 years since the comic strips first appeared in newspapers. Another notable film from them was The Boys in the Band. Directed by William Friedkin and based on the acclaimed play by Matt Crowley, it received attention for being among the first American films to focus on gay lead characters. While not initially a box office success, The Boys in the Band continues to be remembered for its significance in film history. Another fondly remembered Cinema Center Films release was the musical Scrooge, starring Albert Finney as Charles Dickens' famous miser. The film got mixed reviews, but still managed to earn four Oscar nominations and build a following in the years since its release. Most of the movies produced by CCF were modestly budgeted, but they did eventually spend $15 million on Arthur Penn's western Little Big Man, starring Dustin Hoffman as a man who ends up raised by a tribe of indigenous Americans. It received strong reviews and did manage to double its production budget at the box office. The most famous film to come out of Steve McQueen's deal with the studio was the racing movie Le Mans, a passion project for McQueen he was heavily involved in the production owing to his love of race car driving. It did run into trouble when the original director, John Sturges, dropped out because of disagreements with CCF, and Lee H. Katzen was brought in as his replacement. Le Mans would end up the last movie McQueen and his solo productions would produce for them. Despite some of these films and a few successes, Cinema Center Films was not profitable for CBS, and the final nail in the coffin was when Chief Gordon T. Stolberg was lured away by 20th Century Fox. CBS shut it down in 1972, although they did get to release the second Peanuts movie, Snoopy Come Home, before closing up shop. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, that film did not come anywhere close to the numbers of a boy named Charlie Brown. You might think that after this, CBS would stick to television, but CBS president William S. Paley became enthusiastic about film production again not long afterwards, with CBS Theatrical Films founded in 1979. They had even bigger ambitions with this new studio, even expecting to eventually join the Hollywood majors. Curiously, even though CBS was one of the founding partners of TriStar Pictures, none of their theatrical films were distributed through it. Instead, Warner Brothers was the principal distributor for most of the movies produced by CBS Theatrical Films. That first movie was the romantic comedy Back Road, starring Sally Field and Tommy Lee Jones. It was directed by Martin Ritt, one of a number of notable filmmakers who direct films for the studio. Others included John Frankenheimer, Richard Lester, Randall Kleiser, and Arthur Penn. All the films they made for CBS theatrical films are hardly among them most remembered. In fact, let me know if you've heard of any of these movies. Table for Five, Finders Keepers, Grand View USA, Windy City, The Lightship. The only movie they produced that performed decently at the box office and still retains a significant viewership years later is the teen comedy Better Off Dead, directed by Savage Steve Holland. Even though it did not receive particularly positive reviews in its original release in 1985, it quickly developed a more appreciative audience over time. Otherwise, the majority of the CBS theatrical film's output did not come close to making their money back on their theatrical release. Shortly after the release of the thriller Target, CBS announced they would again exit the theatrical film market. For a while, it seemed like it would remain that way, especially after Viacom, the parent company of Paramount Pictures, acquired CBS in 2000. In 2005, CBS would split from Viacom, and a few years later decided to go back into the movie business. CBS Films was created, with an international distribution deal initially signed with Sony. That first movie was the medical drama Extraordinary Measures, starring Harrison Ford and Brendan Fraser. Released in early 2010, it received little attention and was largely dismissed by critics. CBS Films did fare better financially with the romantic comedy The Backup Plan, starring Jennifer Lopez. They also handled the American release of the Hammer horror film The Woman in Black, which pulled in decent numbers. A lot of the films CBS released were primarily star vehicles they threw the dice at. One such movie that did well with the older crowd was the comedy Last Vegas, which got attention for its cast of multiple Oscar winners. CBS also picked up the Coen Brothers dramedy Inside Lewin Davis, which was acclaimed by critics and got a bit of attention during that award season. Shortly after, CBS Films made a deal with Lionsgate to distribute their movies. 
The teen comedy The Duff performed decently, and they had a particularly noteworthy pickup with Hell High Water. The film opened in the summer months and had solid word of mouth as it increased its theater count. It even managed to receive an Oscar nomination for Best Picture, A Knight's Feather in the Cap for CBS. A movie that did not get the Oscar attention they hoped was Peter Berg's Patriot's Day, a drama about the Boston Marathon bombing. Despite good reviews, it underperformed at the box office and did not attract major awards recognition outside of a mention from the National Board of Review. Another film they had certain expectations for was the action thriller American Assassin. They saw franchise potential in it, but it did not make the numbers it needed to and no sequels were made. The Vince Van Gogh movie At Attorney's Gate did earn Willem Dafoe an Oscar nomination, though. In 2019, CBS Films would see some major changes to its structure. Early in the year, CBS announced they would fold the unit into CBS Entertainment Group and get out of the theatrical film space. The company's explanation for this was they wanted to turn their attention towards building up their streaming service, CBS All Access. They still plan on releasing the last few remaining films slated for theatrical release, though. One of those was the young adult romance Five Feet Apart, which found an audience with its target demographic. Another one was the horror movie Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, which got solid reviews and was a box office hit during that summer. The last movie released by CBS Films was the comedy Jexy, which was panned by critics and attracted little interest from moviegoers. Not long after this, CBS would merge back with Viacom. This would ultimately put an end to CBS's film operations now that they'd returned to being under the same umbrella as Paramount Pictures, and even the streaming service would change its name to Paramount Plus a few years later. So right now, I don't see CBS giving it another go anytime soon. Nonetheless, these were noble efforts on the company's part, and these ventures did result in some worthwhile films making it to theaters. However, the three CBS film studios show just how difficult it is to enter the theatrical film market. See you next time.